After Bayakuya deduces that the phenomenon originated in South America, Shamil, Lillian and Connie venture down to the surface, but wind up in the middle of the ocean, prompting Bayakuya and the others to go down and rescue them. The six begin living together on a nearby island, forming relationships and raising children together. As the crew start to gradually die from pneumonia, however, Bayakuya writes down the hundred tales to pass essential knowledge down to future generations in the hope that Senku would one day be able to use them. Back in the present, Ruri takes Senku to the village cemetery where Bayakuya lies, relaying Bayakuya's final message to Senku that the hundred tales are a scientific gift for him. Afterwards, Jen warns Senku and the others that Tsukasa and his army are coming. A group of Tsukasa's army, led by a man named Hyoga, approaches the village and beats down Kinro. With Jinro unwilling to cut down the bridge to the village with Kinro still on it, Senku, with the aid of Jen and Magma, convinces Hyoga's group that they've already produced guns, forcing them to retreat. Three days later, during a storm where guns would be unusable, Hyoga's team attack again, only to discover that Senku and the villagers have managed to produce katanas. Although Hyoga proves to be a powerful foe with his spear technique, the spear breaks thanks to some sneaky sabotage by Jen. Hyoga reveals that his attack was merely a distraction so his ally, Hamura, could sneak in and set fire to the village, forcing the villagers out into the open. Wanting to protect the kingdom of science, Sukka manages to successfully lure Hyoga's troops away from the village and strand him and Hamura above the poisonous gases from the acid pool. Hyoga pushes three of his minions off the tree where they are killed by the poisonous gases. Aiming to attack Tsukasa's army before it grows too big, Senku sets his sights on reinventing the cellular phone. Meanwhile, Hyoga reports to Tsukasa that Senku is still alive. Senku and Ishigami village begin work on the cell phone, planning to complete its construction by spring. In order to manufacture gold filaments for wiring, Senku creates a cotton candy machine to test with sugar. Senku brings cotton candy to Hamura, who has been spying on the kingdom of science. After running into imperfections making filaments, Senku develops a gear train for the cotton candy machine, inspiring Chrome to construct a water wheel with Kasiki. Using the new water wheel, Senku mechanizes the iron making process, freeing up the villagers to prepare for winter. Meanwhile, Senku, Chrome, and Kasiki begin developing light bulbs, allowing them to celebrate Christmas by decorating a tree. Chrome uses the new invention to explore deeper in caves, where he finds a host of new minerals. Senku and Kasiki attempt to create a vacuum tube, but they cannot find a filament that can withstand the heat. During a New Year's sunrise, Senku receives inspiration from Sukka and realizes Tungsten is the solution and employs himself, Chrome, and Magma on a spelunking expedition. In the search for Tungsten, Senku, Chrome, and Magma search a nearby cave. After encountering a mica vein, Magma tries to save Senku from falling into a sinkhole, but both eventually are trapped. Chrome saves them both by filling the sinkhole up with water. The three hurriedly return to the village after encountering a deposit rich with minerals in order to make it in time to celebrate Senku's birthday. While the three were gone, Jen and the village build an observatory for Senku. Senku unveils the pile of tungsten for final preparation. After being crushed into a fine powder, it needs to be heated at an extremely high temperature for it to become usable. While Senku readies the tungsten powder, he charges Chrome and Kasiki to create a method of pinpoint high-temperature heating using everything they have learned since Senku's arrival in the village. Once the tungsten filament is created, everyone splits into groups to complete the remaining tasks, Sukka and her friends. Finish twining the gold wire, Senku and Chrome create the necessary plastic, Kinro, Jinro, and Kahaku burn coal for its ash and make a microphone, and Jen and Ruri create zinc carbon batteries. They all finish their tasks, and Senku puts it all together, creating the first modded cell phone in the new world. To the villagers' dismay, Senku informs them they require two cell phones for full functionality. After testing the cell phone across a wire, Ruri tells Senku of one of the hundred tales, hinting towards a time capsule sealed in Bayakuya's gravestone, a glass record. 
Bayakuya intended to create a record to communicate with Senku across millennia. Using a phonograph he reconstructed, Senku and the villagers are able to hear the voices of the astronauts for the first time since petrification as well as a song from Lillian. The song inspires the villagers to recreate the entertainment of the modern world. With the support of the village and the cell phone, Senku declares a stone war against Tsukasa. Taiju and Yuzuriha wait for Senku to complete his part of the plan as Yuzuriha prevents Taiju from blowing their cover. Tsukasa and Hayuga prepare for the upcoming attack on Ishigami village.